Today, along with my Portuguese friends and Babylonian friends, we are hitting the road, which called the Death Road, less than two hours drive to the city of Samarra. But first, let's fill our tank. Back on the road. So we are leaving Baghdad, heading to a beautiful place. And right now driving by a road which back in time called the Road of Death, but not anymore. And uh, it's 3.41 afternoon and the weather is like 40 degree. Yeah. It's called the Death Road because it was controlled by killer fighters. After lots of bloodshed, today it's cured by heavy army with lots of checkpoints. Green light will be given for visitors after questioning for the purpose of visiting and ID checking. Samara main checkpoint held our IDs or passport if you are a foreigner. They will give you a visitor card to pass other checkpoints and also to collect your ID or passport upon departure. After less than two hours driving from Baghdad, we made it to one of the most famous landmarks of Iraq. About dress code, for outside Baghdad, I suggest for women travelers to always have a scarf to blend in. Entrance fee for foreigners is 25,000 Iraqi dinars, while for Iraqis, it's just 3,000. Assalamu alaikum. Habib, Allah Oh my goodness, I got goosebumps a millennium years ago a mesopotamian went against the flow he innovated a new minaret style and the tallest one in the world maybe not everyone remember his name but many people recognize his spiral minaret that inspired many architects around the world diego so the minaret of Samarra is the Burj Khalifa of Iraq. Of its time. Yeah, of its time. <laughs> it's Burj Khalifa of Iraq. Inspired Burj Khalifa in Dubai. The spiral minaret of Samarra, or as the locals call it, Malwiya, which means twisted in English. Built in year 851. For a period of time, Samarra was the capital of the Abbasid dynasty capital of an empire from the borders of Morocco to China. The Abbasid dynasty lasted for around five centuries. Samarra is the only remaining Islamic capital that retains its original plan, architect and artistic relics, calling it by archaeologists as the best preserved plan of an ancient last city. During his travels around the world, Ibn Battuta also visited Samarra and documented it in his famous travel book. One of his famous quotes is, Who lives, sees, but who travels, sees more. It's time to climb the spiral minaret. Fear is my friend. I love fear. Fear allows me to reach my highest potential. The fear of falling is an illusion. Fear is an illusion, but we have to have a desire. We have to have something to push us. Fear pushes us. The best thing in life are on the other side of our maximum fear. Slowly, slowly, we're climping up to the top of the minaret. windy and slowly we're climping up to the top there is no fence as you see there is no fence we have to go over our fears oh. get this a little bit not a little bit too much Bismillah. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> slowly, slowly it's getting narrower and narrower. Wow. <sighs> you 
look at this beautiful shadow then yeah it's part of me This spiral minaret survived for over a thousand years. What a strong structure. The Malwiya Tower with its vast spiraling cone, 52 meters high and 33 meters wide at the base. At the top of the tower rests a round vestibule, which is adorned with eight pointed arch niche. I climbed 399 stairs. This is the top of the minaret. Look. Let's walk slowly and show you the top of the minaret. Just make sure that we will not fall from here. From one side, I saw the mosque which this minaret built for. This is the mosque and this was the minaret. So the Muslim priest or the sheikh or the imam would come here and calls the prayer. It was the largest mosque in the world for the next 400 years with capacity of over 100,000 worshippers. But nowadays, only the tall walls are left. What's your feeling, guys? You made it to the top of Samara Minar. I feel that I conquered Samara. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I'm afraid of heights, but I made it to the top. <laughs> and this beautiful shadow of the minaret, yeah. right in the middle. Beautiful shadow. So officially, we made it to the top of the spiral minaret. As you see, many people are gathering. So beautiful. We are here during sunset. And the view from here is so epic. So beautiful panoramic view of Samara city. From there, I saw heavy smoke from a distance. It turned out that it was smoke of burning plants to clear the view for fighters. During the occupation, it turned from a historical site into a military base, from the American troops all the way to ISIS. Not just the historical place got damaged, but many innocent civilians lost their lives. With time, the people of Samarra went from hearing the voice of prayer calls from top of the spiral minaret to hearing gunshots from peaceful prayers to bullets and bombs. Back in time, Samara called Surra Man Ra'a, which means happy who see it. And during the war, nicknamed Sa'a Man Ra'a, which means sad who see it. The spiral minaret witnessed lots of wars, bombs and destructions. Over a thousand years of ups and downs. And on the other side, the golden doom of the Ascaria Shrine is shining. I visited last winter, it's accessible for visitors and a pilgrimage site for Muslims. It's one of the holy sites and the resting place of both Imams, Al-Hadi and Al-Hassan. Why called al Ascaria Shrine? Because back in time, Samara was the center of the Abbasid military base. Ascari means military. Right now we are about to meet our local friend, Baha. Ten, 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 ten. Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu Welcome to Sahaba. <laughs> so, after 10 minutes walking, we made it all the way to the holy shrine of the Askari Imams. There's a sad incident happened here and back in 2007. This golden dome got bumped. So as you see, we have to remove our shoes and uh, leave it in this uh, safe so place. So they give you this just to pick up your shoes later. About dress code, women need to cover themselves and in my opinion, men should cover their tattoos. It's allowed to take your phone inside, but not allowed to take camera. You can take photos, but not videos. Now we will enter to the tunnel. Let's check it out. This underground tunnel, which called in Arabic, the Sirdab, has a unique story. Google it and widen your knowledge. The worship place of the Imams, according to the traditions, hold the fence and greet, read religious dua prayers. Back to enjoy our panoramic 360 degree view of Samarra. So, this is Samarra city and the minaret. Visitors are not allowed to enter modern Samarra city, except if you have a sponsor who is living there and guarantee you. Actually, sometimes even doesn't help. And this tall tower is the pharmaceutical factory. It's the pride of Iraqi pharmaceutical and the pioneer in the Middle East. 
let's quickly visit another nearby archaeological site. We made it to a special place, but we have to go underground. Let's go together. It's dark, but uh, I don't know if you can see. We are slowly going down. Yo. This place built over a thousand years ago. We are talking about not 10 or 100 years. We are talking about over a thousand years palace. So we made it to the Abbasid Khalifa Palace here in Samarra. It's so beautiful. And he built it underground here. Right now we are 13 meters underground. Why? To be cooler weather in summer. This is the Birka Palace, which translated into the Pond of Water Palace in English due to the presence of this huge pool in the center of the palace with 62 meter wide and 2 meters high. This was the relaxing palace for the king. Imagine nowadays it's so beautiful and then imagine about a thousand years ago. Wow. Over a millennia, the technique, decorative panels, arc and architectural details used here were outstanding and unique. You can see all these writings around the palace. It's written under the order of the president, Saddam Hussein. God bless him. In 1989, this place got renovated. And um, you see the third line got erased. That's where written President Saddam Hussein. It's full of rooms. Wow. I'm too scared. I'm too scared to go inside. We are trying to explore some dark tourism places. Ah! <laughs> Fake news. This place is like a maze, it's full of rooms. Rooms inside rooms, inside rooms, inside rooms. Wow. Guys, so this is uh, the um, well, the old hammam of the Khalifa, the Abbasid Khalifa, oh, as you see. So the, here they would uh, make a vertical opening fire <laughs> and warm the place. So guys, uh, you know, Khosi, uh, she has a multi-talent. One of the talent is? DJing part-time in Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she kept us awake till like uh, 5 or 6 a.m with very beautiful DJ music playlist. <laughs> and right here you see that it's written under during Saddam regime got renovated. But but only 5% of the palace got excavated. Yes, yeah, still under excavation. Or no excavation actually. <laughs> So you see, even locals are coming here to check it out. Wow. Nowadays, the spiral minaret is a UNESCO World Heritage, including the summer and decorating the 250 Iraqi dinars banknote. There is no fence, we're just walking around. Thanks for the resilience, people of Samarra, who kept protecting it and continue preserving it. This strong structure survived for over a thousand years. So you can see, even our military are coming and visiting this beautiful structure. According to some legends, so women would climb all the way to the top of the minaret and through their abaya, the black uh, cover. If it fall on the ground flat, then their wish will come true. If it's not flat, then their wish will not come true. So even local peoples come to visit this place and even military and uh, we just took a picture with them they are so nice and protecting this place from any conflict so actually samarra is controlled by different uh, by special military um actually samarra is controlled by special military 
because so many conflicts because so many conflicts and wars happen here so the checkpoints are really strict but they are very nice like um, very respectful and uh, you might like spend 10 minutes in the checkpoint it's totally fine they just want to record your uh, what do you call it passport or ID or, or things like that to make sure everything is going smoothly Go against the flow. Even if people will not remember your name, they will remember your innovation. Your action will inspire people to not just think out of the box, but to get rid of the box. Be like the spiral minaret, strong and innovative. So, I uh, see many people brought memory. Yeah. We have from Poland. Poland. Yeah, from Poland. Cheek. And we have also from New York. Here. Yeah. And also we have from Germany. Yeah. And then from mm. Portugal. Portugal, yeah. Nice. Okay. So they sell even souvenir here. And this is the fake one, and here we go, the original one right behind me. So, we watched sunset from here, it's so beautiful. Now we are heading to the car. There are many more beautiful archaeological and cultural sites around Samarra which we will explore for future trips and now it's time to get back our IDs from the checkpoint and head back to Baghdad. We had to grab food on the way back outside Samarra city so let me clear it to you guys everyone no matter if you are a local or a foreigner you can visit the spiral minaret and Al Askari shrine and some other archaeological cultural sites but without a sponsor you are not allowed to enter Samara city center about public transportation there are shared taxis leaving from Baghdad Alawi garage which cost 15,000 Iraqi dinars per person and can drop you off at Samara main checkpoint soldiers and guards are so respectful so just smile and enjoy your eye-opening experience it's 9 42 p.m. and we just entered Baghdad 